experiment to measure the effects of cosmic radiation on microcircuits was devised by a class of aerospace apprentices several years ago. It was carried out in the space shuttle, and now you're going to have an opportunity to evaluate the results. Morgan, I take it that you're not interested in the effects of cosmic radiation on microcircuits? As a matter of fact, I am. Very much. Oh, I'm very glad to hear it. Uh, then perhaps you'll be good enough to tell me what you're reading. Oh, it's an article about the breakdown of the vaccine production unit on CARSAT. Uh, well, I was just wondering whether that might have been due to a charged particle from space corrupting a microcircuit. Hmm? Morgan, at this moment, there is an investigating team interviewing every expert in Europe to try and find out what went wrong with that production unit. Perhaps you consider yourself to be more expert than they are? Well, no. It was just an idea I had. I'd be grateful, Morgan, if you would keep your ideas for what I'm talking about. As I was saying, I want you all to examine the results of the shuttle experiment and work out for yourselves the significance of the data. Ah, we can't sit around here like this all day. Well, I have to prepare a report. For Stein's meeting tomorrow with Prunier and Mann. I want to know what we've been doing. And why we have achieved nothing. It's no one's fault, Willem. We've all done our best. And he's right. We've achieved nothing. Well, at least we know quite a few things that didn't cause the shutdown. That's something. Another three days like this, and we won't be able to produce our 72 kilograms of vaccine, even if we do manage to start the unit up again. The investigation will go on, won't it? Until you do find out what caused the shutdown. Oh, yeah. We'll just have to start at the beginning and check out everything again. Stan, I shall withdraw from the investigation tomorrow. I'm quite certain it isn't the base product which is causing the problem, so therefore it's got to be something to do with the engineering or electronics. I can't help you there. You've done what you could, Mary. Well, one last thing. I'll help you prepare that report. Hey, Dave, let's go. Come. Listen to this. An upset event in an electronic device may be produced by the charge generated when a heavy cosmic ray nucleus traverses the depletion region of a sensitive volume of the junction. Yeah, terrible, isn't it? Now, why don't they write normal English? This proves what I was saying. The point is, only one circuit is likely to be affected at any one time. You'll be affected if you don't get to Carter's lecture now. Come on. They've printed the log of the shutdown in here. The problem is, how could the corruption of a single circuit explain all the events that took place? Well, like Carter says, why don't you leave it up to the experts? Well, the experts don't seem to have achieved much, do they? OK, I've made a few notes. The first point is, before the shutdown occurred, did the pump in the unit slow down to half its normal working speed or not? Now, what's your view on that, Wilhelm? Well, in my view, I think that... But surely... Yeah? Well, it says quite clearly in the log that it did slow down. That's only what the log says, Mary. Personally, I'm becoming more and more convinced that it didn't actually happen. I agree. But why? What would cause such an occurrence? Failure of a component? Almost impossible. Certainly not the thermal system or the flow rate sensors. We've checked them. An impurity in the base product? No. Well, the only other reason would be that the computer instructed it to run at half speed. We know that that did not happen. No, the only likely conclusion is that it continued to function normally. But the computer was told that it had dropped to half speed. Why? Malfunction of the speed detector? Stan, it could be that field plate. No, I went to see Professor Bozeman again. Oh, no. He swears that the materials are stable. Stable? We're talking about how the speed of the peristaltic pump in the unit is monitored, Mary. There's a magnet on the tachometer wheel of the pump motor. It causes an electrical impulse in the detector at each revolution. I'll take your word for it. Thank you. 
You're just lucky we didn't ask you to go and see Professor Bozeman. <laughs> 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 He's very enthusiastic about magnetic detectors. The first time we went to see him, he gave us quite a lecture on the subject. Naturally, you will need to monitor the speed of your peristaltic pump. Yes, we thought a field plate might be the answer. Oh, of course, of course. A directionally solidified eutectic, consisting of a semiconductor and metallic needles. Mm -hmm. Highly sensitive to magnetic fields. Right. We uh, saw your paper on the formation of a eutectic in space. Oh, yes, 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 the uh, Space Lab 1 experiment. Yes. I was trying to compare uh, the effects of gravity and zero gravity. Uh, here. Oh. On the directional solidification of a semiconductor metal composite. Yeah, now, you about know, this pump, Professor. Thought, uh, gravity had no effect on the eutectic. Ah. Uh, but I was able to demonstrate that the needles form a denser array in zero gravity. Oh, yes. Yes. Very satisfying. Oh, immensely satisfying, Mr. Schroeder. <laughs> as soon as the uh, sample cores were returned from NASA, my assistant and I started work. The samples have been formed in space by melting the eutectic in a furnace with a gradient heating facility. We began by cutting each eutectic sample longitudinally. Under the microscope, cut that way, you see the metal needles lying lengthways. But that is not the best attitude for assessing the distribution. So, the next step was to take cross-sectional slices from each core. That way, you see the metallic needles facing you as small dots. We mounted all 60 slices and polished them with diamond paste. Then, we chose three identical sides on every slice and five identical square areas inside each of those sides. We took a photograph of each of those squares, 15 of them on every slice, and enlarged the photographs. Now that gave us 900 photographs of different cross sections of the three samples. Each photograph showed the distribution of the needles in a particular area. Then came the laborious task of counting every dot. <laughs> Fortunately, students in the university kindly volunteered to help. Now, there was an average of 300 dots, that is to say, 300 metal needles, on each photograph. We counted about 270,000 of them, all told. And the result of your experiment was uh, satisfactory? Oh, striking, Mr. Schroeder, striking. Uh, when you compare a binary eutectic, which has been directionally solidified in zero gravity, with one which has been solidified in Earth gravity. What do you see, huh? Uh, this is what you see, gentlemen. The density of the needles of the samples produced in space shows an increase of 30%. Yes, very impressive. Very. If we could turn now to the question of our pump, Professor Roseman. Pump? I still don't understand what eutectic materials are. It's all right. You needn't carry on explaining. But they're quite important, Mary. They're used in aircraft turbine blades, self-lubricating bearings and things like that. Things like our magnetic field plane. The point is, Bozeman is totally convinced that the eutectic materials are stable. So something else must have caused the computer to receive the wrong information? Such as? The corruption of some microcircuits. I see no other possible explanation. Do you agree with that, Stan? I'd agree if Wilhelm were talking about the random corruption of one circuit. The trouble is, there's got to be more than one. There's no way of accounting for the figures in the log if only one circuit was corrupt. This is a scale drawing of a telecommunication satellite. The important thing to remember about a scale drawing is what? Uh, the scale? That's right. In this case, 20 to 1. 
which means that every measurement on the real object is exactly 20 times the same measurement on the drawing. And we can say that uh, all the actual distances are scaled down by a common factor. Now, uh, would you please turn to page... Scaled eight down by a common factor. Well, I'm pleased to see that Mr. Morgan is paying attention for once. Do you know there was a solar flare three weeks ago? That would explain the increased cosmic radiation. What? Tim, I've got an idea. How it could have happened. How it would be possible to explain everything in the log if only one circuit was corrupted. Are you still on about that? All the signals from the sensors are received by an analog to digital converter. Yeah, the ADC, so? They're fed into the processor. Suppose that one circuit was corrupted in the ADC. It's just possible. Dave, forget it. What makes you think that you can explain something the experts can't? They're looking for something complicated. My idea is very simple. That's why they haven't thought of it. Project Office, Frankfurt. Project Director, Dr. Stanislav Makowski. Can I speak to Dr. Murkowski, please? It's about the space project. Uh, I have an idea that might help. Who is calling, please? Uh, David. David Morgan. I'm afraid Dr. Murkowski is in a meeting, Mr. Morgan. Oh, um, will he be free soon? I'm afraid not. He won't be free at all this weekend. If you'd care to send a letter, Dr. Murkowski no, will consider... No, but there isn't time. I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan. I cannot interrupt him. I'll give you the address oh, if you like. hold on. Well, we've still got three more days before the deadline. Two. We'll need a day to recommission the unit. Well, whatever caused the data corruption in the first place, if that's what happened, started a chain of events which led to the failure of a component. We have to find that component and replace it. We only managed to get about 10 kilos of product before the shutdown. Think of the cost per kilo if we don't get into production again. Think of the cost in lives. Every kilo we lose means that two million people don't get immunized. I suggest we begin again. Everything must be rechecked. There is something we have missed. What are you doing? Going away for the weekend. I'll be back Monday. Yeah, you'd better be. Where are you going? Frankfurt. It's urgent. I've only two days left to put that production unit right. Hey, Dave, you're not gonna... You're crazy. See ya. You're really crazy. 